Hi, I'm John McGuire, and I'm the product manager for Global Search. I'm going to take you through some of the things that we're planning for GitLab 1312. And I have with me Terry, uh, who's going to help me cover some of these changes as well. So the first item that we're actually planning to work on in 13.12 is something that uh, can be confusing to our users from time to time. The scope tabs that are in search will occasionally move, change, or even disappear. And we want to correct that. We want to actually have this so that it is consistent. And we're also going to lock the order of those tabs in. So this consistent ordering of the tabs means that if you're used to going to a search and uh, issues being in one place, it should be there each time you do a search versus moving it to behind merge requests or milestones. It should all be organized and, and static in the same places when you do these searches in the future. Uh, so that should make it a little bit easier to kind of navigate and remember how you're actually using global search. Um, that's kind of, that, that's one of our key deliveries we're going to have in 1312, not too complicated. Uh, the next one, we start getting into something that is a lot more fun. We start to explore some of the additional feature sets that I think are really going to help people navigate through search and create a lot of new functionality. Uh, we're going to turn the projects drop down into a multiple select option. Uh, so that's going to look something like this. You have your normal search that comes up. You have your group and project drop downs. Uh, and now you'll be able to use checkboxes to actually select searching against multiple groups. Uh, and that will, and, and this is essentially better than what you had today where your options are select a group, or I'm sorry, select a project, uh, or uh, select all of them. And there's a lot of times when you don't need to see everything, you just want to see a handful of specific projects, maybe recent projects that you've been working on or have been contributing to. And so you'll be able to do that now by uh, by actually doing multi-select, which I'm pretty excited about this. This is actually going to lead to a, a, a lot of new options and changes for us as we start to look at building additional feature sets out for global search. Uh, so finally, we have another big change that's coming. Uh, we have, we are going to, Terry's going to tell us about moving the merge request into its own dedicated Elasticsearch. Well, hi, I'm Terry. I'm one of the senior backend engineers on the global search team. Uh, we've been kind of marching along on um, moving all of the elastic search scopes out into their own index. Uh, that's a, a multi milestone uh, work that we've been doing probably over the last few months, if I remember correctly. So uh, we've completed issues and notes and we're now moving on to merge requests. Um, we're going to be going through the same process and I feel like it will be very similar to the work that we've done for issues. This will involve denormalizing some of the permission data related to the project uh, visibility level settings, as well as <clears throat> creating some new uh, advanced search migrations to update all of the existing data with those backfilled fields and then changing the searches to use those new denormalized fields rather than uh, using the join to the, the project. Um, and last, we'll have some additional migrations to pause indexing, fully move all the data over, and then do some cleanup work. And it's, it's gonna be pretty exciting. So, you know, let's, let's talk for just a little bit more about uh, splitting these scopes up, right? Because we've, you know, Terry, we've, we've actually put a lot of effort into uh, taking what we had as this like huge, massive index. And I, I can, of course, speak more clearly to what exists on GitLab.com. You know, we have a, an eight terabyte index that's all of the, the SAS information from all the repos and everything. And we've been breaking that out into these other indexes. And it's, it's definitely uh, taken some resources. We spent a lot of time working on that and, and uh, breaking it out by each scope. And I kind of wanted to explain a little bit more about like what that value is. Like, why do we, why is it so important to what we're going to advance on and, and what are the values that we're going to see from that? Yeah, I think first of all is the one that you have listed here, which is the improved performance for some of the more common searches. Um, I personally use the issues and merge request search quite often in my daily workflow, and I'm looking forward to seeing a bump in performance there. Um, 
some of the others. Oh, go ahead. Well, no, I think that's a great call out, right? Like if I, I, I did some analysis to see how users are actually using the different scopes um, a few weeks ago. And there's, it's definitely interesting, right? When you look at how many users, for example, use issues. And as we broke issues out from the eight terabyte index that we had for GitLab.com, uh, it was eight gigs. It was only eight gigs. And so that means that that eight gigs of data is actually serving out 17% of the searches that we saw coming in. Uh, that's a big use case difference in actually searching across an entire index that includes all of the code that searched as well, which is a large percentage of that storage. Uh, so there's, there's different ways to kind of organize the information that's being called returned and queried against. Uh, so those results have, have gotten a lot faster. When you go and do an issue search now, uh, they are almost just instantaneous. I mean, it's sub-second response times in, in most cases. And so I, I think you definitely see like a big performance improvement as you look at uh, the items that were split out into your own index. And it kind of makes sense that that's why, right? They're actually searching against a much smaller index now uh, to try to return that information. It, it also probably helps with indexing. When we actually have the process to go in and do refresh of indexing, it's now refreshing those things against, you know, a small group of eight gigs versus a terabyte. So that that's going to speed things up quite a bit. Yeah, I think um, definitely we'll see some performance improvements. I, th I think some of the other things that will uh, be really beneficial is it allows us to like more fine tune settings per index that could potentially also improve performance right now when we have everything in one giant index, we have settings that are just like overall for everything. But, you know, if issues is only eight gigs, but maybe blobs is like two terabytes that will allow us to like tune those even better to allow better performance for searches. Yeah, that's another really good point, right? So I think about this and I think about what gets stored in that index. And, you know, the index is going to map different types of data from each of these scopes. So it's, it's going to map data for like an issue. We're looking at an issue here. Uh, so, you know, some of the data we may be looking at has to do with like the, that's an epic, sorry, uh, but it, it has to do with like labels. Let me pull up an issue here for reference. There you go. So, um, you know, you have like assignees, issues, milestones, iterations, lots of different types of data that can be mapped into an issue. Uh, none of these really would exist at a file or in the, the code. And so then, you know, they, they don't really have a value there, but if they're in the same index, they would have to, you know, they would have to exist as a reference somehow. Um, so you don't have to manage across all of these different types of content. You can manage the mapping for just what's in that particular index, which seems really, you know, streamlined and helpful for being able to build out feature sets, which is great because one of the next things we want to do in search, not in this, not in this iteration, this milestone and, and this, uh, this next release, but future, uh, we want to be able to build out the, the features that are coming from this, um, our content types like this, our scope types to provide additional sorting and, and filtering, uh, sometimes referred to as facets. And that would be incredible if we actually are doing this now instead of against an eight terabyte index, we only have to update a, and back populate an eight gig index so that we right. can add something like labels and author uh, into a filter for issues. Yeah, that definitely will it leaves us with a lot more flexibility in so many areas, um, most of which are, well, not most, but a lot of them that the users will see will be performance, but in terms of like maintenance of the data and ability to expand new features, it's going to give us a lot more finer tuned control. Yeah, and there was, there was another piece that you were just talking about before uh, we got on this call too about how this could um, create another advantage for us related to the, um, um, help me out here, I try to remember. Oh, I think, well, so we haven't really planned for anything uh, around this, but I just think it may give us more control to possibly only pause indexing for one of the indexes. If we only wanna do something with merge requests, why do we have to affect everything else if everything else is split off? Um, so that may be a cool new future direction that we can go into to allow for like more uh, zero downtime migration capabilities with like less impact. Yeah, that's incredible. You know, we, 
It's definitely been a, a big positive feature that we've been able to do uh, zero downtime re-indexing and, and thinking about that indexing only affecting the indexes that are updated at that time means that you're really a, you're really efficient and able to keep working across almost everything except for that one piece that you're going to update. Um, you know, and I think that's really what it comes down to, right? Breaking out this index isn't about necessarily what that next change is going to be. It's about how much op how many options it really starts to open us up to and how it's going to make all of these things a lot easier for us to go and do uh, so that we can iterate through these and add more of these things faster with less complexity. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, great. Well, I, I'm, uh, thank you for watching. And this is just I have a, a you know, real quick understanding of, of what we're actually working through over the last few milestones regarding the, uh, the updates that we've been doing for splitting out these scopes. And uh, we're really looking forward to the flexibility it's going to give us and the additional features that we're going to be putting on the table um, over the next few uh, releases. So thank you. All right.